Today is just a quick video to talk to you about updating the firmware on the Avatar HD system or what is also known as the Dominator goggles from Fat Shark. In this video I'm going to walk you through the process of updating the firmware on the goggles and then we'll walk through the process on the VTX. Now the idea of this video is just to try and give you a nice simple step-by-step -step walkthrough on what to do so you don't walk into any problems. There has been a few issues with people getting their VTX TXs or their goggles bricked before they actually start. So I thought I'd put the video together just to make sure that you understand a few things around the process that you need to be aware of. Now, just before I jump into this, I just want to say if you find this video useful, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. Make sure you are hitting the bell as well. That way you'll get updates on any videos that I make in the future. If you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content like this, such as buying systems, such as the Avatar HD, there is a link to my Patreon in the description. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. I would not have been able to make this video as well as all of the other content without their support. Anyway, let's get on to it and let me get a few things you need to be aware of out the way first. Okay, so what we'll do first is do the update on the goggles and then we will do the update on the VTX. Before we do that though, I just want to make you aware of a few housekeeping rules for this system. It is possible at the time of me making this video to brick your goggles or your VTX if you get this process wrong. It isn't particularly difficult, however, if you were to have a power failure partly through the update, it would be possible to brick the goggles and whilst they have made an improvement in the VTX we haven't actually seen that in action yet so at this moment in time I would also say it's possible for this. If you are using batteries to update this system make sure they are fully charged and at no point do you accidentally disconnect it whilst performing the update. I strongly advise not using something like a short saver whilst doing the update on this system something that could cut the power because again that could result in a brick. Okay let's go and take a look at the process for doing the goggles first of all. To upgrade the avatar system the first thing you need to do is download the latest version of firmware for the system. It is important that both your VTXs and your goggles have the same version. At the point in time of me making this video, the system does not work with mismatched firmware, so you do need to make sure that you update all parts, and if you have multiple VTXs, you need to perform the update on all of them as well. Once you have downloaded your files, you will get two separate files for the system. You will have one called avatar underscore GND and one called avatar underscore sky. Now these stand for avatar underscore ground, that is the firmware file for the goggles and avatar underscore sky is the firmware file for the VTX. It is important that you don't get these mixed up and you do place the correct file on the correct location when performing the update. To do the update on the goggles, we simply take the avatar underscore ground file and place that on our SD card and then put that in the goggles. For the VTX though, you need to take the avatar underscore sky file and place that on the internal drive that we will see on the VTX when you connect it to your computer via the USB cable. So to update my goggles, we're going to take the file, which is the avatar underscore ground and copy it. And I'm then going to paste that onto the SD card I have, which I'm going to use for my goggles. So we have the files on our SD card and we're going to place that into the goggles and lock that in place. Now, before we proceed with the update, I'm going to make sure that we have a fully charged battery. We cannot risk anything going wrong in this process. So before you update, make sure that the battery you are using is fully charged. As you can see here, we've got cell voltages of 4.18. So that's basically full. I simply turned the goggles on with it two minutes ago just to make sure it was working. So what we'll do, is then plug the power in. And what I'm gonna try and do then is just show you how this process proceeds with the camera on the front of the lens as well, just to give you an overview of what you should see in the goggles. So I'm just going to record the two. So we will fire the goggles up and let them boot. And you gotta wait for it to go to that screen with the OSD information at the bottom. So we're not looking for that main boot logo you've got there. You're waiting for the screen that just shows the OSD information and nothing else. There we go. 
Once that's done, we're going to go down and we're going to press and hold the bind button for about eight seconds until the display in the goggles reboots. So I'm going to press and hold now. And what you're waiting for is the, for the goggles to reboot and they will then come up with that avatar screen again. So they've rebooted and you can now see that avatar system logo on the display. And then after a few seconds, the goggles will start to beep to tell you that the update has started. We'll just wait for that to start a second. There we go. You should now be able to hear that happen. And that is the sound of the update proceeding. And now you simply have to wait. There is no rush. It will not show anything else on the screen other than that logo you see there. Just leave it until the process finishes. Just a quick pause here and something to clarify. Early versions of the firmware actually had a different boot logo. If you're updating yours and it doesn't show this same screen that I'm showing, don't worry. This image with the Avatar HD name and this logo up was added in later firmware versions. Earlier versions may simply show the name Avatar HD along the middle. Don't worry, that is absolutely fine. What will happen is you will get this new logo once you've actually updated your firmware. Firmware. Now this process can take up to 10 minutes so what we'll do now is wait for that to complete and then we'll hop back in once it's done. As you can see, the update has completed, the goggles have rebooted, and we now have our OSD on the display. Now, something to note, as the update proceeds, you will actually notice that the tone increases in frequency, or in the sense, it gets faster. Then, at the end, it goes to a long tone, reboots them back to this main screen. Once this is done, we can then go into the settings and check that the firmware is actually updated to the correct version. We'll do that a little bit later in the video. And then we can move on to doing our VTX. The next thing we're going to need to do is update the firmware on our VTX. Now to do this, you're going to need this little USB cable that they provide with it. This allows us to access the onboard storage for the VTX to transfer the file over to that and then start the update process. So what I'm going to do first is actually plug this little USB cable into the free port on the side of the VTX. I've left just enough space on mine to be able to do that. Now. Some things you need to be aware of are you need to power the VTX to access both the USB drive and perform the firmware update. That means you should remove your props before doing so. I am not going to do it in this video. However, you should not power up your aircraft on the bench whilst there are props attached. You could use a short saver to protect yourself should they kick in. However, that could also then risk cutting the power and actually bricking the VTX. So the safest way forward is to always remove your props before proceeding with an update like this. However, I do have some other safeguards in place, which means I'm not going to worry. So what we will do is actually take our USB and plug it into our computer, and then we're going to power up the quad. A piece of advice I would give is you should always have a fan around to keep the VTX cool if possible. These VTXs do get very, very warm in use as well as when updating the firmware. So if you do have something like a PC fan available, I would advise using it. It just helps ensure that your VTX is not going to overheat. I've got one with an XT60 cable on it. What I'm simply going to do is just pop that there a minute and just blow some air over the top of it just to help keep the temperature down. We're then going to power it up and then place the battery safely there. And once I've done that, the USB drive should appear on my computer for transferring the file over.
Next, we then need to take the file for the VTX, which is labeled avatar underscore sky. We're going to copy that and we're then going to place that on the drive that should have appeared on my computer, that is drive F. We're going to delete everything that's on there at the moment. And then we're going to just paste on the new firmware file, which is the version that we're upgrading to, which is there. Then once that is done, I'm going to disconnect the USB. So we will disconnect the USB with everything still powered on. I have not powered anything down at this time. And now I am going to trigger the update for the VTX. Now to show you this, I'm just going to move the fan to the side and tilt this on the side so you can see the LED flashing on the side there. You can see under my strap, it is flashing green. What I'm then just going to do is reach in underneath and trigger it by pressing the bind button for about eight seconds. So again, mine is down there. I'm just going to look in, press and hold, and I'm going to keep that held. You can see the light is flashing on the frame there for about eight seconds. And then what will happen is the light will go off. I will release and then you will see that what will happen is the LED will actually come back on and start to flash red. There we go. You can see, then it goes to solid red. Then if we leave it and wait, it will reboot. And then it will come back to flashing green once the VTX is rebooted and updated successfully. There we go. And you can now see that the LED on the side is flashing green. That means the update on the VTX is now done. What I would do at this point is just give it a few more seconds to make sure it's fully booted and connected. And then you can power it down. Then now it's powered down. I can then power my goggles up, power everything back up and actually test that it is working correctly. Now, just to show you that process again on my bench VTX, just to show you it a bit clearer, I've already transferred the file over to the VTX, but I haven't powered it down and I've still got the USB connected. So I'm gonna disconnect the USB and then press and hold the bind button until the LED goes out completely, about eight seconds to do this. There you go, I'm going to release. And then you simply wait for the update to proceed. What will happen is that LED will come back on and flash red, just like it's doing there. Go solid red. Then it will reboot. And then once the VTX has updated, it will come back and start flashing green again. The big difference between these two is that the goggles can take about 10 minutes. The VTX is literally a about 10 seconds once the process has started and it reboots and we're back to flashing green, which tells us the update has been successful. Once you power everything back up, you should then have image just like you've had before. If I then go into the settings menu, go down to device, and if I go under device info, you should then be able to check that both the VTX and the goggles are now on the same version and that it has updated correctly. Now, they do advise after performing an update that you should do a full reset on the system to ensure that there's no hangups or no carryover of issues from the last firmware. So what I'm going to do then is click reset all, click confirm and allow that then connect, reboot. I'll have to rebind and then be able to test the new firmware as expected. Just one thing to note, if you do have any problems with your system rebinding, make sure the goggles are set to channel eight. There is sometimes an issue getting it to bind if you're on channel one, two, three, etc. but it should bind on channel eight, no problem. So as you've seen, the process is fairly straightforward. On the goggles, we simply place the firmware file on the card, perform the update, give it 10 minutes and it should go through. And on the VTX, we simply transfer the file to the internal storage. And again, 
give it 10 to 20 seconds and that process should update as well. The real room for error in this is loss of power. That is what will cause a brick. Now, if you brick the VTX or if it doesn't go through properly and you're unable to connect, you're going to have to send it back to Walksnail. If you do have a problem with the goggles, whilst the official process is sending it back to Walksnail, there is actually a workaround that's been developed by the guys at the FPV.WTF group that allow you to flash the goggles with a series adapter but that might not work in every situation it will depend on what the situation is with the bootloader again it is strongly advised making sure that you do have a fully charged battery that way you shouldn't get problems with them bricking as long as you follow the process I have shown here now as I said earlier there is a few little steps you should do after doing the update that is full reset on the system and then rebind all your VTXs. If you have trouble with that, do make sure that your goggles are on channel 8 because I have seen that myself. There are also a few other quirks I've come across with people having problems performing the update on the VTX. One thing I would suggest is before even starting the update on any of this, plug the VTX into your computer and make sure that you can see the drive and then you can actually do the update on your goggles and then VTX. It isn't really important which one you do first. What's important is that you do both because they won't communicate if they're not on the same version. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. If you found it interesting, as I said at the start, please do check out the links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who does support us via those platforms. We would not have been able to make this content without their support. Again, if you're not a subscriber, please do consider hitting that button. And if you found this video useful, please do give it a like. If you've got any questions, please do put them in the comment section and I will try to answer them as soon as I possibly can.